Okay, so we are going to look at the ramp tool because the next kind of big factor in creating this uh, Velocivoir replica is the big ramp that goes up the middle of it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into my architecture tab here and click ramp. And like the stair tool, I have uh, the option of the run tool to use, or I can create it with boundary and riser sketch lines. Now I happen to know um, from experience that I'm not going to be able to draw this ramp the exact way it's made with the run tool. Sometimes it just won't kind of let you do it uh, properly. Um, part of the reason for that is because uh, there's a lot of code information that's already put into these ramps. So uh, like if I go into edit type here, I look at uh, regular ramps here. They show a maximum incline of 30. They show a maximum slope of 112. These are kind of standard dimensions. Well, we have um, the so-called VS ramp that came with this project that's got all the correct information in here. Of course, you can, when you hit edit type, you can duplicate, rename it, change all these materials and things to fit your own project. So hit OK. I'm going to do this with boundary and risers. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select, I've got these lovely CAD underlays. And so what I need to do, <clears throat> excuse me, what I need to do is draw the inside and outside of the ramp, oh, the ramp here. I'm just using this pick lines tool to do that. Um, hit tab a few times and find my line here. There it was. Okay. Then I can, of course, go back out here and um, drag these lines to where they need to be. Um, trim them together with the trim tool. Always selecting the lines I want to keep, not selecting the lines I want to go away. It's kind of the opposite of CAD. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is risers. The first risers you want to draw, and you need this to be uh, a closed loop. So the first ones you want to draw are going to be the end riser conditions here. And I'm going to trim this again together. So, need those. And then actually up here, we're going to have risers at each of these moments as well. So one there and one here. Uh, now, generally speaking, uh, ramps come in automatically with railings. And uh, in this case, uh, you can use the railing tool here and choose what kind of ramp or what kind of railing you want. Uh, so this has a default ramp that comes in with it. I'm just going to say, or a default railing that comes in with the ramp. I'm going to say none. Hit OK uh, and hit finish. And this will create my ramp. So let's take a look at this. In 3D, there's my ramp. Um, you'll notice it is going the wrong direction. Um, believe anyway. Uh, it needs to come up here, I'm pretty sure. If I remember this project correctly. Well, let's pretend like it does anyway. So I'm going to go back to my first level plan. And um, what's great is I can uh, choose the flipper control here and just change uh, which direction the ramp goes. So super, super easy. Um, fantastically simple little tool. Now, if you do a ramp, let me just do one off to the side here. I'll turn off my section box. Um, okay, we're in our little level one plan here. Um, basically what you're going to do is take your run tool, the ramp tool, and uh, draw your ramp, specify your railing type, just pick one, hit OK, hit finish, and then you'll see that the ramp, I was under my building, but it has a, it has a railing that already comes with it, uh, and the railing is hosted to the ramp so that Regardless of the um, slope of the ramp, it's always kind of following the ramp, which is super nice. Uh, you can also select and delete these individual portions if this ramp is wall mounted or something like that. Uh, you can also choose a new host or reset the railing back to the ramp, or you can hit edit path even. Uh, and if I go back into my floor plan, I can. I actually don't think I'm not. I don't remember if you can. Um, draw extra lines to it like that. Sometimes it won't let you. Um, it just depends. But I can draw a secondary line that will um, flatten out. So when you draw a railing sketch as a single line, let's go back and look at it again. 
Um, anytime you make a break in that line that's near, so as you can kind of see, these are two separate pieces here. Whenever you make a break in that line, uh, it's going to change the slope uh, of the railing again. So I could do the same thing down here. And this is how you make um, and extend your stair railings, for instance. If you have a traditional stair and you need that railing to come beyond the stair and down again, that's, that's kind of how you do that. Um, the railing tool, which can be incredibly frustrating, but also super helpful. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like if you do that. Of course, if there's a slab here and a slab up here, perfect. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know about ramps. They're very simple. Um, now, obviously, that's not the only way to handle this. Uh, my preferred way of doing ramps actually is to just do a floor sketch like this. Actually, let's draw it out here on the side. Learn from my mistakes here. So, draw your floor sketch, make it the correct width, uh, and then once you're finished with it, use that, um, obviously you would want the right thickness here, but you use that modify sub elements tool and you can pick your entire ramp up, let's say five feet or whatever it is. Um, and that'll create your ramp. Now you can draw a railing and host it to this floor and it's going to do the same slope situation going up this ramp. Um, there are some kind of pros and cons to doing this this way. Um, the pro is that you can absolutely optimally control exactly how this ramp um, looks. If it's got an unusual face or something like that, it's, it's I mean, you can do some of that with the ramp tool. Uh, but there are going to be times when you need a little bit more control than that. Um, I don't know why my ramp isn't showing up here, but that's fine. Um, so there are times when you're going to need more control than that, or there might be times when you're, you're kind of just playing around and you need this to be more fluid than the ramp sketch. And in that case, for instance, I can add a, sp a split line that goes across uh, this floor, for instance. And I can make a landing here. You know, it's a completely different thing. And this, this just kind of allows you to, um, if I modify these elements, now we know that this one's at like, let's say 2, 4. Maybe you can make this line also 2, 4. 2, 4. And, uh, and it's a lot easier to change where this landing is uh, very quickly with the Modify Sub Elements tool than it is to go back in and edit your whole ramp sketch and stuff. So it's a little bit easier and more fluid to work with from a um, quick design perspective. And you could always go back in and put a real ramp in there. You know, you can make a floor type that's just for your ramp and use floor type. I, I haven't run into any major issues with this. Actually, uh, in some ways, I prefer this because... Uh, with the floor, I can go in and edit the uh, floor type to include layers uh, that would show the structure of the ramp. And uh, with the ramp tool, you have just a single material. So if I look, again, look back at my ramp here, uh, you can see there's just that one material. It doesn't have all those layers that you have with the floor type. So now it's a potential benefit of using the floor. Um, it is, as I said, it's my preferred way of doing it. But uh, if you're from more place of work uses the ramp tool, you have an option for that too.